Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth video in our Navris Getting Started series. In this video we're going to be looking at how we monitor patches and how we use a Navris scheduler. So the first thing we're going to look at is how to manually install a patch for a single device. So let's go ahead and click on our Devices tab and we'll find the subclient. So we'll use the Global Global and we're going to click on the name of the device under that client. What we're going to do now is under the second row of tabs here we've got Patch Management. So let's click on that. We'll see a list of patches that will pop up. So here we can see there are patches missing from my device so I'm going to go ahead and choose a security update and under the selected task drop down over here I'm going to click on install patches. A warning will pop up asking if I do want to install the patch I'm going to go OK and then that patch is going to be installed on my device. OK so now we're going to look at how we set up the actual monitoring for our patches our authorization and exception of patches as well before we look at the scheduler. So we're going to choose our top level client here because we can always roll our settings down to all the other clients. We've got SLA status thresholds for our patches as well. So we're going to have a warning for a certain amount of days. So for here we're going to put 14 days. For threat we'll put say 21 days. And for failure we'll put 30 or 31 days. So the reason why we're entering 14, 21 and 31 days for the SLA status threshold is so that we can receive tickets and alerts that if patch ages exceed those days. So for example, I'll get a threat ticket if the patch age for devices exceeds 21 days. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set our category exceptions. Now exceptions are patch categories that we don't want, we don't need, and we don't want Navris to alert us on. Any patches uh, that you think might cause damage to the device if installed, for example IE or anything like that, once we have the ones we want ticked, we're going to click on Select, and we can see them all under Category Exceptions. Next one's Authorizations. Now, authorizations are patch, patches that we do want uh, to have monitoring for. So we want to receive alerts uh, if they're outdated, and we want Navris to be able to install them either from Navrisk or from WSUS directly. So as you can see in the tick box below, we can either bypass WSUS or we can have Navrisk uh, tell WSUS to install or push patches to our devices. We can also copy these changes down to our subclients, so we only really need to set this up once. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go and save this for all of our clients. So just to double check, if we click on one of our subclients here, we can actually see that those settings have indeed uh, copied down. So now all we need to do is, uh, if we go and click on our scheduling tab, we actually go and start setting up our, our scheduled jobs. So we're going to click on our Clients List tab, make sure we got our top level clients selected. And we're going to go to Automation and New Scheduled Job. So when a new scheduled job pops up, we've got the General tab. And so this one's going to cover the name of the job and the description. Uh, so we just call it Test Patching and just give it a quick description as well. So after that, we've got the Scheduler. So we've got On Event. This is really cool. So we can uh, have this job run when a device starts up or a device's first contact with Navarus. We've got One Time. We've got daily, weekly, and of course monthly. So under monthly, we're going to choose nth weekday of the month. And for this scenario, I'm going to kind of align it with uh, Microsoft Patch Tuesday. So I'm going to go to the second, we'll make it Wednesday, so after the Tuesday, second Wednesday of the month, every month. So we'll give it a start time. So we'll say perhaps 11 o'clock at night, and so make that PM. And uh, that's basically our schedule, that's when our scheduled job is going to run target devices. So we can select the device filter. This is also quite cool. What we can do is we can select a specific device and so forth or we can select devices based on their attributes. So for this video I'm going to go with device type um, as a device attribute. So I'm going to choose all Windows servers and let's choose uh, Windows workstations as well for a patching. So let's save that and we can see that we've got our two device types selected there and we'll enable this job. Now that the general fields are completed, let's go to the action tab. We're going to go for pre-action. Pre-action is what we want to happen before the job runs. So we can do, for example, wake devices using wake on LAN, which is quite a cool feature. So we'll let it wait for 15 minutes for devices to start up. And we're going to choose maintenance mode. So we're going to choose device maintenance for our patching, and we're going to put this on performance maintenance mode. This is going to suppress performance-based tickets, but not the other tickets like the availability. So this is how we want that to be set up. Under action, we can execute script packs. Uh, we can run reports as well. So you can see all of our script packs are listed here, uh, and we can set the parameters and also run as a specific type of user. 
And like I just mentioned previously, we can also run reports. And so we've got a whole list of our reports here that we can run and schedule jobs and have that sent to uh, specific users and email addresses. Uh, and of course, install patches is the one we want to look at today. Now you'll notice over on the left hand side we've got patch age set to 1. Now patch age is used to ensure only patches of a specific age are installed. For example, if I set this to 15 days, only patches that are 15 days or older will be installed during the scheduled patching job. So I've already got my critical updates and security updates selected from my authorizations that we set before. And we're going to set our post action now. So this is what we want to have happen after the patches have installed. We're going to give it a two hour window before the post action starts so that all the patches are installed. Uh, we can set this as restart if required if the devices need it. And then we wait a further 15 minutes for the devices to restart before we take them back out of the device's maintenance mode. Once we've done that, we can also have a, a result ticket created in our service desk and send a result email. So I want to do both. I'm going to send a result email through to our management at Navarisk team so that they can see in the morning that the patch job is run. Let's go and save those changes and we'll be able to see our new scheduled job pop up in the month view. We've also got a week view so we can see what's scheduled for the week. We've got a day view so we can see what's happening for our day. We've got a job list. So if we look under our job list, we can actually see our test patching job here. Um, we can edit it if we want to. And so we've got the green edit arrow over there on the right, make any changes that we want. Or we can also go and delete that job if we don't need it anymore. So we'll go and do that because it's only a test job. So as you can see, monitoring patches and scheduling jobs is quite easy, so it's a nice short video. Um, in our next video, we're going to be looking at the remote control, how we can remote control to our devices, uh, set global passwords, and of course use third-party remote control integration through Navrisk as well. Thanks for watching.